Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. Anyone glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Amen. We just want to lift up the name of Jesus for he's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a holy God. And we just want to lift him. Put your hands together with us as we lift up our Savior for he's awesome.
Oh, the Bible tells us that we ought to sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth, that we ought to sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with mighty voice, proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. you are indeed awesome. Lord, we say thank you this morning. Thank you for being an amazing God who woke us up and started us on our way. Thank you for being a faithful God who has allowed us to see the 20th day of 2024. God, we are privileged this morning because there is still breath in our body. There is still blood flowing through our veins. God, we say thank you this morning. We say thank you for allowing us to be safe from the dangers seen and unseen. We thank you for allowing us to be in this space today, God. Whether it is in the physical space or the virtual space, God, we say thank you for everything. And Lord, as we go through this experience today, God, we want to face and have an encounter with you, God. We want to be transformed. We want to be renewed. We want to be healed. We want to be set free. God, we want everything that comes from being in the presence of the Lord. So, Lord, we invite you. We give you permission to have thine own way. This is our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Let all those who believe that God is awesome say amen. Let those who believe that God is worthy of our praises give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Shout to the heavens. Give God the glory that is due unto his name. In Jesus' name we say amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Good morning and happy Sabbath, family. It is good to be in the house of God. It is good to be at the light. Amen. The place to connect, the place to transform, the place to serve. I want to welcome each and every one of you to Beacon Light, the greatest church on the planet. Come on, say amen. amen. Listen, I know that it is single digits outside. I know that it is not for the faint of heart to be outside. But the Lord saw it fit to make us and allow us to have the access to make some jackets and some coats and some long sleeve uh, uh, items to put on so that we can be a little bit warmer. Amen? Amen. Listen, family, if the, Florida, the one from Florida could come out in this weather, come on, somebody. Then those of you who are not here, we welcome you as well, but we want you to come out to the building so that we can see you on today. I welcome you here to Beacon Light as we are in day number 20th of our month of consecration. Listen, family, all month we have been partaking in 31 days of prayer and fasting where we are intentionally seeking God's face in preparation, in expectation, in anticipation of what God is about to do. I am excited because I know without any shadow of doubt that God is up to something this year. Do you believe that, family? Amen. I am in belief of that. I am convicted of that. And as was shared with us two weeks ago when we were here physically, you all learned and discovered that our theme for Beacon Light this year is kingdom focus. Somebody say kingdom focus. Listen, our job and our responsibility for throughout, throughout this year is for us to co-labor with God because you do know that God has invited us into laborship with him. Amen. God has invited us and we are taking the mantle and saying, God, we are going to co-labor with you for the building up of the kingdom of God. Listen, you ought to say amen because if it was up to us individually to build the kingdom of God, we'd be in a heap of trouble. 
but the fact that we get to co-labor with the creator that we can co-labor with the redeemer that we can lean on his strength and his power and his wisdom listen that just tells me that it's true what the word says that we ought to just seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and let all of those other things be added unto us can you say amen so listen, family, we have been in a month of consecration every single night this month. We have been joining together on the prayer line at 6.30 p.m. for 30 minutes just for us to come together, talk about the verses of reflection, talk about what we have been uh, fasting about on that particular day, and then we're just spending time in prayer. And I don't know about you, but it has been a blessing each night to just simply come with the people of God just to pray. Amen? Amen. And so, listen, family, I want to encourage those of you who have not been able to partake in that. I want to invite you to join into that as it is important that we are preparing ourselves for the great things that God is doing. And so, family, that was not only just for each night, but we're also partaking in this vision experience of connecting and consecrating ourselves with God. Uh, as for the rest of this month, we'll have a little bit more abbreviated Sabbaths, and then post-service, we'll be going into different ministry breakout groups so that we can uh, prepare ourselves, learn, seek God's face as to what God is expecting from us in this year. Amen? Because it's going to take all of us to achieve this kingdom-focused theme. Amen? Listen, we're focusing on family enrichment, outreach and evangelism, our children and youth, unity and inclusion, as well as spiritual leadership in the church. That is our focus. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing in 2024. Amen? And so listen, family, I am excited about that. I am excited about what's to come. But listen, family, in order for us to get to that place where God wants us to get to, in order for us to really be able to lock in and stay focused on the kingdom building process, we have to be drowned and doused in prayer. Listen, we can't just pray on the day of for God to do something in that moment, but we want to be able to seek God's face and pray about what God's going to do a month from now. To pray about what God's going to do two months from now. To pray about what God's going to do in this during this summer. And to think about what God is going to do on this upcoming fall. And even next winter, yes, we can pray even though we're in the heart of winter right now. We can be praying about what God is about to do for the next winter. Why? Because God says in his word that we got to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when we do that, we need the power of prayer. There is a writer that says that prayer is the breath of the soul. It is the secret to our spiritual power. And so if we want that power, we need to go ahead and seek God's face in prayer. So at this time, we want to invite Elder Tanya Anderson forward, who's just going to lead us in a time of prayer as we seek God's first in the kingdom-focused building process. Sometimes we're heavy and we can't receive what God has for us. So go ahead and put your burdens down at the altar so you can feel God and hear what God has for you. Let's pray. Father God in heaven this morning, we just say thank you just for waking us up, just for allowing us to breathe again, to feel your presence, Lord, to know that you are here and we are here because of you. Father God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Before we ask of anything, we have to acknowledge the giver. You are the life giver. You sustain us, Lord. You just, more than we sometimes realize, before we, before we take a tumble, before we feel something, you're there, God, and we thank you for that. That you would forgive us for our sins and anything that might be blocking our prayers from reaching you this morning. Any doubts, any fears, Lord, let us lay them down with our burdens so that we may hear from you. We have those, Lord, that are sick and shut in. Those who have had surgery, you know who they are, and we know you've gone by their bedside. And you've been there and haven't left them yet. So we ask that you continue to be with them, heal them, Lord, comfort them. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Some of us are going through some things that we keep to ourselves. 
that we've shared with others. But the good thing is, whether we shared it or kept it to ourselves, you know, and we know you have the solution. We can talk to people and share things, and sometimes we can share too much. But God, you know how to keep it under control and bless us where we need to be blessed. And for that, we are grateful. As Beacon Light moves forward with this vision that we know that you've given to our shepherd, the pastor, we ask that you'll continue to guide him as he guides us, that we will do what you would have us to do so that your word can go forth. And whether it's cold or hot outside, we can go ahead and get into the kingdom, Lord, and be with you for eternity. We thank you for all that you've done, what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. So we want to just sing hallelujah to our king. Feel free to stand with us and join with us as we sing praise and worship to our God, our Father. Oh, we give praises to you, God. We give honor to you, God. Yeah, yeah. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise, I'll praise your, name. your name. I'll praise, I'll praise your, name. your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. You are worthy. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. You are worthy of my praise. Put your hands together right there. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise, I'll praise your, name. your name. I'll praise, I'll praise your, name. your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise your name. I'll praise your name. Your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of my praise. Of my praise. So I sing Yeah. 
your voice and sing that with us. of all our praise God you're worthy of all the honor you're worthy of all the glory so we lift you up high in this place God and we magnify your name we give you all that is due you God all that I am I give it to you I surrender it all to you God for you're enough God Hallelujah. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you and take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more alone than I am right now going through a storm but I won't go down I hear your voice whispering on the winds to calm me out you will cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown I'll never be more loved Than I am right now Cause you are a child You are enough Child You are enough I will be I will be content In every circumstance Child, you are enough. See, John. 
watching in every service because I know you'll always be with me. I know you'll never leave me. You'll walk with me through every storm. In every circumstance, sing Jaira. You are love. Oh, Jaira. You are love. Jaira. Jaira. You are love. No matter what we go through, no matter the storms that we face, God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll carry you through it. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You don't have to get upset. You don't have to get angry. You don't have to get stressed. Just know that he's enough. He's more than enough. And I will be content. Cause you are Chira. You are enough. Give God praise for being more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. 
he's more than enough. God, we thank you for being more than enough. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. than enough. He's more than enough. He's not just barely getting by. He's not just barely making it. Rather, and he's not enough. He's more than enough. He's more than we need, more than we desire. He's more than. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful this morning that we serve a more than enough type of God. When I need a financial blessing, he doesn't just give me what I need. He gives me more than that. If I need a, a good health diagnosis for one thing, he'll give me that and then something else. Why? Because he's more than enough. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being more than enough. We thank you, God, that every time we've needed something from you, you've provided that and then some. And for that, we say thank you, God. Well, because, God, we're here in this worship space together. Today, we need more than just a word. We need more than just eloquent words and great theological uh, depictions. Father, we want more than that. We want to experience and an encounter with you, God. One that you specialized in heaven just for us. So God, I pray as we enter into this moment, that you consecrate me, Lord, for thy service by the power of grace divine. And may my soul look up with a steadfast hope and may my will be lost in thine. Father, may everything I studied come out with power and clarity. But I also pray that everything that I did not study due to my human frailty comes out with greater power and greater clarity, clarity and thought than I could have ever imagined so that we can all experience a demonstration of what the power of God looks like through human frailty. So God, tune all of our ears to the frequency of heaven. Take over in this space at this time. In Jesus' name we do declare amen and amen. You may be seated. Family, as we have every intention to move through service with brevity and clarity and efficiency, uh, the goal was to get us out by 12 so that we can go into our breakout groups and have those uh, opportunity to really uh, dive into our ministries and what God is calling us to do. And as I look in at the hour, it's 1141, and you've given me 19 minutes to work. <laughs> I know some of our elders are laughing at me because we had a whole debate last week that I could, uh, I can stay, I, whether or not I can stay within 20 minutes in preaching, and last week I failed, um, but we're going to try again this week, okay? <laughs> and if I uh, do not uh, conclude in 20 minutes, uh, we're going to just blame the elders for the curse they put on me. I want to call our attention this morning to Matthew chapter 18. I want to invite you to stand for the reading of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14 is our selective text for today. Part three of our kingdom focus, keep the main thing, the main thing, sermonic series. Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, reading from the New King James Version. 
This is what the word says. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 11, and some versions don't have uh, verse 11 in them. They excluded it from the manuscripts. But I want to read verse 11 from the New King James Version because it's important. And it says, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Verse 12, what do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly, I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the 99 that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. As we are in part three of our installment of Kingdom Focus, I want to speak from the subject this morning. It's on his shoulders. It's on his shoulders. Holy Spirit, do thy will. Do thy will, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we do declare amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. It's on his shoulders. Here in Matthew chapter 18, we find Jesus to be in the heart of an earthly ministry that is giving people a new lease on life. Jesus being accompanied by his disciples has been going from city to city, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, offering hope to the poor, and taking intentional time to teach and preach about the good news of the kingdom of God. And while they are in the midst of doing this type of relevant ministry in the city of Capernaum, Jesus' disciples in verse 1 of Matthew 18 ask Jesus a question for consideration. They want to know who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The disciples who have yet to gain an understanding about the true spirit of the mission of building the kingdom of heaven with Jesus are asking this inappropriate question because they are still seeking status and hierarchical position in heaven. The disciples are more concerned about who amongst them has Jesus selected to serve in the highest position of his administration that he would soon establish. They are more concerned about who Jesus has determined as great amongst the 12 of them. So Jesus, who knows this true intentions of the disciples, brings a little child in the midst of them and responds to the disciples by saying in verse 3 and 4 of Matthew 18, that unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The response that Jesus offers to his disciples is a powerful one because what it demonstrated to them and to us today is that Jesus is not concerned about people's positions in the kingdom of heaven. Rather, Jesus is more concerned that people get into the kingdom of heaven. Let me say that one more time, that Jesus is not concerned about the positions in the kingdom of heaven. He's more concerned about the fact that people are are going to get into the kingdom of heaven. This is why Jesus continues in his soliloquy of a response to the disciples by telling them that they need to be careful about offending people and causing them to fall. They need to be careful about putting one person above the next person because if we cause others to fall, if we serve as stumbling blocks to others, we won't make it into the kingdom of heaven ourselves. And the reason Jesus Jesus responds the way that he does is because he is trying to get the disciples to understand that no matter who you are and no matter what you've been through, everybody has an equal opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Jesus is trying to communicate that citizenship into the kingdom of heaven belongs to everybody. The kingdom of heaven is not just for the Jews, but it's also for the Gentiles. The kingdom of God is not just for Sabbath 
they keep us but for first day worshipers too. The kingdom of God is not just for the righteous but for the unrighteous as well. The kingdom of God is not just for those who came to Sabbath school and are early for church but for those that folks that only make it to church once or twice a year. Uh, in other words, what Jesus is trying to say is that the kingdom of heaven is for people like you and me. People who have fallen over and over. People who have addictions and anger problems. People who are quick to cuss somebody out first and pray for forgiveness later. People who just can't seem to get it together. And for those of you who may be wondering why the kingdom of heaven is available for people like that, why the kingdom of heaven is available for sinners like us, will allow me to turn your attention to what Jesus said in verse 11, that verse that I said that many try to etch from Scripture. Let me turn to that verse 11 of Matthew 18 because here we see Jesus saying that the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. In other words, the mission of Jesus in building the kingdom of heaven is not to recruit those who think they have it all together and don't need Jesus, but it is for those who he found when they were lost. And is there anybody in here today who can testify that the reason you are here today is because when you were lost, Jesus found you. That when you were at your end, Jesus found you. That when you have given in to your addiction, Jesus found you. That when depression got you, Jesus found you. When brokenness got you, Jesus found you. When you were bruised, Jesus found you. When you were battered, Jesus found you. Is there anybody here who can bless the name of the Lord? Because when you were lost, he found you. And so to give more substance to this reality of be Jesus being on a kingdom-focused mission for those that were lost, Jesus begins to share to his disciples a parable known to us as the parable of the lost sheep. And in this parable, Jesus tells the story of a man who has a hundred sheep under his care. Now, according to historical implications of the times, this shepherd having a hundred sheep lets us know that he was both wealthy and well established. It lets us know that this man was not missing any meals. He was never late nor missed a rent payment or a light bill payment. This man was able to take care of his family because he was able to generate a significant income with the amount of sheep that he had. This man was in a prosperous situation. Yet despite the shepherd's wealthy living situation, the Bible says that when he loses one sheep, he leaves the 99 other sheep to go after the one that was lost. He, he, he ends up sacrificing the majority of the sheep to go after the one sheep. And this is interesting to me because him losing one sheep does not impact his financial situation. He would still be considered wealthy. He would still be considered well off. He wouldn't be lacking for anything. Yet this man still goes and pursues after the one sheep that fell astray. He was adamant about not losing that one sheep even though it wouldn't impact him nor his family. And because of this action taken by this shepherd, the question for our consideration this morning is why was this shepherd so passionate about going after the one sheep that he was willing to leave the other 99 behind. Why was he so adamant, passionate about that? Why couldn't he just let it go and let the 99 be what he had? Why did he have to leave the 99 and go after that one? I believe that there's a couple of points and lessons that we can receive from this story. The first one being that the reason that the shepherd was willing to go after the one sheep and leave the 99 behind is because he had embraced his responsibility. You see, we have to understand, family, that the relationship between the shepherd and a sheep is one of great significance and importance. 
It is a relationship where the shepherd has a duty to watch over and care for that sheep. The shepherd has taken care of the sheep since birth and is highly invested in the life of that sheep. And likewise, the sheep has a deep need for the shepherd because in order for the sheep to survive, it needs to be in the care of a shepherd. If a sheep was to wander away from the human care, it would be difficult for that sheep to find food, water, and protection from predators. The survival of that sheep was dependent upon the shepherd. Therefore, when the sheep would go astray, because of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, uh, the responsibility to go get that sheep was on the shepherd. And the shepherd would do anything in their power to go find the sheep and bring it back to the flock because that's where the sheep can call home and be taken care of. In other words, when a sheep would go astray, the shepherd had to be the one to take the initiative, y'all. He had to take the initiative to go out and find that lost sheep. Uh, the shepherd would be the one to go out and chase after the sheep. Uh, and this is good news for us today because what it teaches us is that if we are going to be co-laborers with God to build the kingdom of God, we can't wait for others to come to the kingdom. We can't expect them to come and be a part. We just got to go and take the responsibility and go after them. In other words, being kingdom focused is not about us waiting for others to take initiative and make a move. It's about us getting up and going out after them. And the reason we need to do this is because the kingdom of heaven is not designed for us who are comfortable in the four walls. The kingdom of heaven is not designed for people who got it made, who have been saved and who know Jesus. No, no, no. The kingdom of God is designed and specialized for people who struggle with their relationship with God, who don't know who Jesus is, who has never witnessed God anymore. And I need us to know that this is good news because many of us, the reason that we're here is not because of what we were able to do. The reason that we're able to be here is because God himself took initiative and came after us. God put everything aside and said, I'm coming to get you. God took responsibility and said, I'm not letting you go. And can we praise God just for two seconds in right now for coming after us? Can we bless the name of the Lord that we serve a God who said, I ain't too proud to chase y'all. I don't care if I got a suit on. I don't care if I got dress suits. I don't care if it's seven degrees outside. There's people, there's sheep out there, and I need them to go get them. Why? Because it's my responsibility. Being kingdom focused means that uh, uh, we are going to accept the responsibility of going after us because we understand that no person is to be left behind. Oh, so the first thing that I see in this story is that the reason that the shepherd was willing to go after the one sheep was because the shepherd embraced the responsibility to care after the sheep. Oh, the second thing that I see as to why the shepherd was willing to go after the one sheep and leave the 99 uh, is because he was willing to take the risk. Willing to take the risk. We might not shout on this point because it is what it is. Uh, but this is one where we get a little bit uncomfortable. Because here's the thing. We have to understand that when the shepherd left the 99 to go after the one, it was a major risk that he took because it meant that the 99 would now be unattended. They had no covering now. And the reason why this is a major risk is because leaving sheep unattended meant that the sheep could be subjected to predator attacks, subjected to straying away themselves, subjected to uh, thieves and robbers, injuries and mishaps in the environment, as well as a lack of guidance. The shepherd going back for the one put the other 99 sheep at risk. And more so than those risks that I just named, uh, the shepherd leaving the 99 to go after the one sheep put the sheep at risk of emotional damage as well. 
What do you mean, preacher? I want to ask you a question, family. Uh, we talk about this story. I'm pretty sure many of us heard this parable before. Jesus went after the one. Praise God for the one. But have you ever asked yourself how the, how the 99 sheep must have felt as Jesus left to go get the one? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Because you have to understand that the 99 sheep were the faithful sheeps. The 99 sheep were the ones that followed the rules and the commandments of the shepherd. The, the 99 sheep were the ones that did everything that was asked of them. They showed up early for church. They stayed and went to church every single week. They went to Wednesday night prayer meeting. During the revivals, they were there. They were the leaders in ministry. They did everything that God asked them to do. They did everything that the shepherd asked them to do. They never strayed away. They stayed on course. They stayed on the path. Yet the one sheep that now finds themselves to be unfaithful. It seems as though the shepherd leaves the ones that have been faithful to go after the one that was not faithful. Whether or not you want to admit it, some of us feel the same way uh, that those 99 sheep feel. You feel as though the church has abandoned you and left you because you did everything right. But it seems that the church's focus now comes at your expense. I told y'all, we're not talking back on this one. And here's the thing. Some of us will never keep the main thing the main thing because our mindset is so wrapped in our feelings. It's so wrapped in our perspective. It's so wrapped in what am I supposed to get? Or, I, God, I've been following you all along. I deserve this and I deserve that. And I need us to understand that the mission of the kingdom building process is not just for you. It's for everybody. So yes, it will come with a risk. We might offend some people in the process. We might hurt some feelings in the process. Some people might get moved out and moved in. It might happen, but I need you to understand that the focus is not on you because you got 99. This other person has nobody. Oh, but here's the good news for those that's like, ah, oh, man, that's still a rough word to understand and to receive, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Here's the good news that I find. Predators. The 99 never got stolen by other shepherds. The 99, when the shepherd came back with the one, were still intact. And so the question you have to ask is, how come the 99 didn't stray away? How come the 99 were still intact? Well, here it is. It, the reason that they didn't stray away is because the 99 understood that even though the shepherd left to go get the one, the shepherd... like you are part of the 99 that you have been faithful but God has won tomorrow next year whenever I don't know all I know is that at some point God is going to right through here because if you don't believe this story then believe that 2,000 years ago when he died on a cross and left to go with his father he may not be here with us right now but at some point he's coming back again so be not dismayed don't fret get out your feelings don't worry God is coming right back for you and so I've seen two things already in this story. The first thing is that the reason the shepherd went after the one uh, and left the 99 behind is because he embraced his responsibility. But the second reason is that he was willing to take the risk of leaving the 99 in hopes that they would believe that he's coming back again. And the final point that I'll make for our time 
is that the reason the shepherd was willing to go after the one sheep and leave the 99 behind is because he understood that the reward that the one is lost he had to go on a rescue mission he says I need to go after this one so what did he do he and the Bible says that he left the 99 went after I don't know how long it took but he went on a mission and the Bible says in verse 13 and then over the 99 that did not go astray now, even though the shepherd was coming back for the 99, why is the shepherd rejoicing? Sheep here together that we get to praise God for. But he's saying, I'm rejoicing over the one more than the 99. The thing is, you got to see how the writer constructs this text. Because the way the writer puts it is that the shepherd is rejoicing over the sheep. Uh, he's not rejoicing because of the accomplishment of finding the sheep himself inwardly. No, no, no. The shepherd rejoices because now he recognizes that because he's now got back in contact with the sheep, the condition of that sheep is about to change. You got to understand that when the shepherd finds the lost sheep, the lost sheep, the Bible says, is in the mountains somewhere. Nowhere near where the rest of the sheep were. Which means I can imagine that this sheep is distressed, this sheep is hungry, and this sheep is hurting. When the shepherd finds him, He's relieved because now the situation and now the condition of the sheep is about to change because he's going to take the sheep home. But I need you to see the powerful and understand the situational context of this because uh, 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 the shepherd, as he takes the sheep back home, he doesn't have the sheep just follow him on all fours. No, 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 no. What he actually does, and this is what they would do when they would go and find the, the sheep that has gone astray. They would pick that sheep up and they would put it on their shoulders. Ah, and I need us to understand that they would grab the sheep and lift it up. when we get into alignment with the kingdom focused mission with God to rescue the Lord they will not have to labor on their own and they don't have to struggle anymore they're just going to be lifted up on the shoulders of Jesus and, and I think we need to just take a moment to look at our own lives because if we do that we'll realize that there were times when we didn't have it It's because he carried you on his shoulders. The shepherd stopped. All I came to tell us today is that if we are to be kingdom focused, we need to put the weight of our lives on his shoulders. It's on his shoulders.
But when I get to that point where now we have found that one sheep, God, it's on your shoulders now. The weight of the vision is not on your pastor. It's on the shoulders of our creator. The struggling marriage, it's not on your shoulders. It's on the shoulders of our creator. Your lack of job security, your financial strain, your health challenges, the addictions that you have, it's not on your shoulders. It's on the shoulders of him. Because he said it clearly in his word. The Son of Man came for those that were lost. Don't think we're the 99. No, we're the one. Our community is the one. So we put it on his shoulders because that's the mission. That's the plan. That's what it means to be kingdom focused. To put it on the shoulders of God and let him carry them back home. So Father, I have done what you've asked. We have declared that your shoulders are the broad ones able to handle everything. I thank you God that the responsibility does not lie with us. It lies on amounts of weight. My shoulders can only have one thing on one side. Shoulders that we can hold on to. Shoulders that can hold the weight of the kingdom of heaven. So God, as we have committed to co-laboring with you. Because we can be comforted in the risk knowing that you will come back in a of the great I am, the great shepherd, Jesus, the one who died for you and for all of us. God, we can rest on the shoulders of Jesus. So thank you. Thank you, God, for your kingdom focus mentality that helps us to move with that kingdom focus mentality as well. So God, we thank you. We love you. We look forward to all that you will continue to do through this church for your community. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all those saints who are going to put it on his shoulders say amen and amen. Listen, family, before we transition into the next phase of our worship experience, which is the time for us to break out into our different ministry groups and for us to go ahead and to uh, 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 strategize and Uh, as we know that we want to be faithful givers uh, in this kingdom building process. We recognize that uh, we can't do everything on our own powers, that we got to depend upon God to, uh, to strengthen us and to give us those that we need. So I'll ask our deacons to just go forth and to collect our offering.
And as they are doing so, I want to let you all know that when you walked into the building, you should have received a sheet of paper that had all of the different breakout groups. Listen, we're going to spend a brief moment in fellowship uh, as, as we conclude in this moment. But then we're going to transition to the various locations that you are serving in ministry in or you have an interest in serving in. We want to welcome you to take part in that. And then we're going to spend some time together today uh, with our administrative support elders leading those conversations about how, gaining an understanding about that particular ministry, but also establishing some processes, setting some goals aside. Because it's cute to talk about the kingdom of God and, and, and it's cute to shout about it, but this is a real practical thing. The shepherd had to put it in his mind to say, I am practically and strategically going to leave the 99 and go after the one. So in our different ministry groups, we're going to ask that question, what does it look like for us to go after the one practically in our conversations? Listen, I know this is different than what we've usually done. Usually at 12, 13, I'm up here just getting started. But it's not about me. It's about us and the kingdom of God. Amen. So I want to encourage you all to look at this sheet. Go to those different areas. Find a place for you. We also have Sister Woman. Sister Woman, can you just raise your hand just for a moment? That is our ministry operations director. If there's any one of you who are like wondering about a place for you to serve and wondering how can I get involved, just go ahead and touch base with Sister Woman. She'll talk you through. She'll, she'll get an understanding of who you are, what are your gifts, and we'll see if where we can place you. And if we don't have a ministry, designed already then let's go ye therefore and begin one together amen because that's what we are about so at this time before we transition I want to invite us to stand for the benediction of this portion of our experience we're going to close this out uh, and then we're going to go ahead and transition to those various areas so that we can really see about what God is inviting us to do as a collective but before I do, there is one announcement I do have to make. This is coming from our, our beloved Elder Allen, who has shared with us that we are doing a, 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 fun, a, a sort of a, a funding drive, if you will, to help those in the uh, homeless in the community. So if you uh, feel compelled to just donate to uh, that, you could just cash up our church dollar sign, the Light KC, and just put the, the notice, uh, homeless ministry, if you will, uh, because she looks to, she's hoping her and a couple of other people on our care team are just looking to get a couple of dollars from our people so that we can help those in the community that are in, without a home and struggling in the cold right now. Uh, but at this time, let us close with our benediction. Father God, we thank you so much that we can put it all on your shoulders. We thank you so much that we don't have to bear the burden of responsibility of fighting and trying to, to save sheep. God, all we got to do is walk with you and watch you work, Father. So, Lord, put it in our hearts, put it in our minds, put it in our spirits to move as you would have us to move, God. Put it in our hearts and our minds to, to embrace the responsibility that you have given us, to, to go ahead and take the risk, God, with a reminder, God, that there is a reward that comes at the end of this rescue. So, Father, we thank you so much for everything that we've experienced thus far. May our groups together this afternoon be fruitful. May they grow. May they be uh, uh, just what we need. And may we leave here today excited about what is to come. Because we believe that when we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of these things that we desire in our hearts will be added unto us. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Thank you for having shoulders big enough, broad enough to take all of our weights and our challenges. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we do declare, amen and amen. Being a light family, I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Go ye therefore in your groups.